Praise the name of Jesus Christ. He is risen. He is alive forevermore. And we thank God because of his faithfulness and mercies. And that's why we are here today to receive the word of God, the word that gives us life and give, give us revelation and becomes lemma in us that we know what the Lord is saying to us, even what the Lord think about us at a time like now. Blessed friend, we welcome you from all of us that you're watching us from. We are coming live from Apostolic Faith Church, Bahati, Nairobi, Kenya. And we thank God for his grace and his mercies that he has uh, bestowed upon his servant, our bishop, Bishop Peter Gatimo, that he has always something that God has given him to share with the church. And today, this afternoon, God has given, us, given him a word for us, even to equip us and to make us better for the kingdom. Therefore, blessed friend, I urge you to prepare yourself. Have your Bible ready, have your pen and also your notebook, and also prepare your heart that the Lord may minister to you in a very, very deep and mighty way. Welcome, and God is going to bless you. We are going to pray, then welcome our bishop to come and minister the word of God. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you this afternoon. We bless your holy name for your goodness and kindness. Thank you, Father, because you prepared a table for us that we may partake from, from you, King of glory. We pray now that Father, you anoint your servant. As he comes over to minister, may your grace be sufficient. We thank and worship you because of your faithfulness. Cover him, Lord, and God extend his boundary in every way. We thank you. We honor your name because I prayed all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now welcome our bishop to come and minister the word of God. Welcome, bishop. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Wonderful. God bless you, pastor. We are now on... We are again together, just praising the Lord. And I know God's children are rejoicing because of who God is. And because our God is able to reign in his level. The good thing is God will not use things that are around uh, uh, those, those frustrating elements, discouraging issues. And he used them as components of using, of, of, of building his voice. God has an original thing from his throne. And he is going to raise us. Remember, our message today is part, I think part four, prepare to win battles. I'm Bishop Peter Gatimo from Bahati Nairobi. We want to remind you, as we have done of recent, recent uh, the, nowadays we are doing and it's an, a mandate from God that we introduce to you the vision, the reality of God's work. 10,000 seater church, which is a powerful project by God for his glory through us. It's a church in Nairobi, Kaguda Road. Those who know Kaguda Road, just opposite Comlock Junction. Big, magnificent church and office complex for Jesus that we are purchasing at the cost of Kenya shillings 340 million. Slightly more than three million dollars. And we we urge you by the grace of God, by the command of the Holy Spirit, by the touch from God Himself to join us in this project. Please pray. Commit yourself every month. And we want to continue that way for the next maybe two years. And we clear. And we will make sure that we keep contact with you. So that when, as we advance and as we make progress, you also confirm and witness that God is raising you as he raises this altar. Attach yourself. It's so clear. Get our account and please, in a very clear way, start contributing and tell God, I want to discover the secret of the kingdom in this altar. It's powerful. It will be a center of raising people, building people, glorifying God, releasing gifts of the Holy Spirit, discipleship center, a center of causing 
people to become better in their talents and gift. Healing wounded families, raising people from low level to establishment, the levels that God has for them. Please join us. It is powerful. Now let's now continue. Prepare to win battles part three. But for another thing is, in Jesus' name, keep your prayer covenant. If you go to Daniel chapter 6 verse 10, the Bible talks about an issue that arose and people thought they would be able to accuse David through his faith in Jehovah God because the king was provided what we call state worship. The king is determining what to be worshipped. If today he says worship this table, worship it. If he says the whole empire, we worship a, a, an image. That's what people were supposed to do. But no, Daniel was not looking for a God provided by the state. He, was, he had God Almighty, the creator of heavens and earth. And now he can't accept this worship being provided by the king. And you, when you go to the Daniel chapter 6, verse 10, the Bible says, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, writing of what? To say what? Whoever will not bow to the idol will be put to the den of lion and will be devoured alive by the lions. Yes, Daniel when he knew that the writings were signed. He went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since early days. That is a custom of prayer life, a habit of prayer life that God expects in a person who is consistent and who is to keep fire burning and who is to be used in battle. Let me advise, advise us all. Can you make a, you know, one day I made a decision now. I'll be praying every morning three hours. I'll try my best. Wake up at 3 a.m., stay on my knees up to six. When I started that, it was difficult. But, you know, why we, we make some principles and traditional habits is to make sure at least we keep ourselves from falling. We keep ourselves in a habit that we always, always keep me in the standard. You know, when you establish a spiritual habit, even when, when you are away from home, you are in foreign land, you are still conscious about there is a habit to discipline my spiritual life and to make me awake. You know, it's good to form a custom, at least basically, that you keep you on fire. And that's what the Bible says, Daniel knelt down on his knees. It was a tradition of Jews, but this one, became a habit, a prayer habit of, his, of the servant of God. That he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed, give thanks before God as it was his custom. It was his custom, but it worked in the days of battle. It works in the days of evil. Just as we learned the other day in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13, take up the armor of the Lord that you may be able to be start on the evil day. This is now the issue. This man, the kind of custom and commitment he has, is able to be start on the evil day. Prayed, and Bible says, verse 11, Then these men assembled, and found Daniel praying, and making supplication before God. They went to the king, accused him, and finally, Daniel found himself in the den of Ryan. But I give God praise. God saved him from that. 
And uh, the king was able to confirm that David has been preserved by his God. The king said, my God, uh, Daniel said, my God sent his angel, shut the lion's mouth so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O oh king, I have done no wrong before you. That is very powerful. Keep a prayer pattern as a basic way to maintain your level of anointing. You are a bishop. You are a leader in the church. Form a prayer pattern that you give, keep you some discipline to maintain a standard of anointing for your ministry and your call. Another thing is obeying God carefully, being keen. I've come to discover one way of winning battles is to form a very keen way of obeying God. You, that you, you are so strict to obey God in the level of his demand. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 28 verse 1, it says, now it shall come to pass if you diligently, diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God uh -huh, and observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. You will cause God to see the need. You also cause God to see the qualifications of a person that need to be set high above the earth. How? Obey the voice of God diligently and observe his commandment carefully. That is enough to see this man qualifies to be set above the earth. One, the demand of righteousness. The demand of righteousness. The demand of a position that is acceptable is that somebody diligently obey the voice of God and somebody carefully observe what God has commanded. That's very important. You know, some people think for a while, you just wake up one day and become strong. You build a capacity of acceptance and favor by diligently obeying the voice. You know, one of the, that's the mistake people are doing. People have standards that cannot work for warfare. On Sunday, you are so spiritual and you look so much uh, uh, honorable. You appear to be revering God. On Monday, even the way you dress and speak, there's nothing godly. At the place of work, you let you are so human to be godly. You know, you don't have a standard that you keep always. Let God know. You see, Daniel, as we have read, whatever he did, three times a day, it was 24-7. It was every day of the week. That was clear. If today I dress modestly, tomorrow I will do it. The other day I will do it. If today, in this altar, I speak spiritual things, let me maintain this standard even when I'm with my children. You know, it's bad to say that God is God of peace. While you are, in essence, in, sincerely, you are a chaotic person, it's good to have a standard that even angels can predict. If angels are asked, what do you think that man will be a man to come? There's, we know he will be praying. You are so stable that God can rely on you. You are predictable in the spiritual realm, in the spiritual level. Obey carefully. And then another thing, Create chance of flow. Uh -huh. Create chance, create a space where God can flow freely through you and me. Let us, let us live in a way that if God today wants to speak, he can speak. If God today wants to show himself, there is a clear way in us. Please be careful. You know, sometimes it's hard. When I'm now clean and preaching, and then after one hour, I'm chaotic, I'm mixing up, so that, 
you know, if I want to rise again and preach, I have to work out because I'm filthy. I'm mixed up. Spiritual life is like a new thing in me. It's like every day there's introduction to anointing. Let's keep the fire. That's very important. Create chance for offload. Even when you are worshiping, let not just worship to create to worship. Let us worship in a way that we still desire that God flow today. Say what you want. Touch the people as you desire. Reach out and reach down and reach in, oh God. Yes, create that flow. And God is powerful. Second Timothy, let's see the scripture. Uh, Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 20. Yes, let's see. Second Timothy is a book of consecration. It's a book of, it, God demands some consecration. Uh -huh. Second Timothy, I hope you are there. Chapter 1. Let's start. Mm -hmm. Second Timothy, I think we are there. Chapter 2, it's chapter 2, sorry. Chapter 2, this chapter talks about a kind of consecrated life, acceptable life. Yeah? You go to verse 3, it says, endure hardship as a good soldier of Christ. Uh -huh. Verse 4 says, no one engaged, engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. You are answerable and I'm answerable to Jesus Christ who enlisted me as his preacher, as his son, as his daughter, as a representative of the kingdom. I, would, I want to keep that name in the list of people that God counts on. And because of that, I will not engage myself with affairs of this life that destroys, that weakens the qualities that made Jesus choose me as a soldier. It says, yes, verse 5, and also if anyone competes in athletics, he is not clowned. Unless he compete according to rules. Verse 4 talks about not entangling your, yourself. Yes, we are talking about prepare to win battles. Uh -huh. Verse 5 talks about keeping the rules of the race. If you are going to win battles, whatever place God has put me, because we don't have the same position. Can you keep the rules of that place? Because we do not win battles just by fighting. We win battles because we kept the rules. Uh -huh. Verse 6. Hardworking farmer must be fast to partake the crops. Uh -huh. Let's continue. Remember, uh -huh. let's go to verse. Uh -huh. If you go to verse now 14. It starts talking about approved and disapproved workers. Can we have such people, categories in battlefield? Let's see. Mm -hmm. If we go to verse 14, remind them of these things. Who? These people that are preparing to win battles should be reminded. I should be reminded. You should be reminded. Remind them. Charging them before God, before the Lord, not to strive about what? To no profit. To the ruin of hearers. There's the discipline of the mouth. I say by the grace of God. In the church. In the spiritual walk. In the battlefield. You leaders of the church. Can you tell all people in the church. Battlefield also involves. Discipline of the mouth. And if we were to speak. We speak the right word. To edify to exhort and to comfort according to 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 2. He who prophesies exhorts, comforts, and he edifies. So that Bible says it will not ruin the hearers. I say soldiers of Christ, 
May God help us not to strive about words that have no profit, that ruins the healers. Hey, our mouths are mouths of edification and building. Verse 15. Now, present yourself. I have a chance to present myself. All people are enlisted in the same level. Entry point is the same. But if you present yourself well, any soldier, they are trained in the same way and the initial step, they graduate the same day, but you have to present yourself for upgrading, for status. The Bible says, now you are a soldier. Do this. Be diligent to present yourself. There is an issue in the gospel. And I want to tell people that. We start all with calling. Jesus called the 12 disciples the same way. But as he pursued his will, he found himself, whenever he wants to go to a deeper place, he can only call Peter, James, and John. Not Thomas, not Judas, not Bartholomew, but those three. Why? I don't think Jesus desired only to have the three. But as he continued, the way these people present themselves, Christ is forced to classify them. There's, there are places where Christ will go with John alone. He is known as the disciple that Christ loved. Does it mean he does not love others? Let me tell the truth. In the gospel, there is always chance to present yourself. Yeah, I know it. I know it. That God says, you are all my children, but still I desire to see you, how you present yourself. And Bible says, present yourself. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed. And then, a soldier, another qualification, verse 16, shun prophet, profane, and idol babblings for the increase to more ungodliness. This must be stopped among soldiers of Christ. Shun! Tell people, stop profiting things that defile people's hearts. Things that make people dirty. Things that when you speak before God, they can cause God to destroy you. You are, you are speaking words that are so evil. I know what. And also, you know, the Bible says their message spread like cancer. And then, and then verse 19, nevertheless, God is saying, beside all this, telling people, present yourself, be good. God is not without his foundation. God is not telling people, present yourself, because he's desperate. He has a foundation. And nevertheless, the solid foundation of God starts. It has a demand, which God says, having the seal. The Lord knows those who are his. There's a foundation of God that's so clear. It's written, God knows. He's not to be told. He knows those who are his. And number two, everyone who calls the name of the Lord should depart from sin. And then Bible talks about cleansing. A great house has vessels of gold, silver, wood, clay. But Bible says some of honor, some of dishonor in a house. Is it possible among us to be some to be of dishonor and honor? How, how do we have, how comes there can arise dishonor and honor among God's children? Bible says if you cleanse yourself, you'll be a vessel of honor. There's a responsibility of cleansing myself just as God is. If you read 1 John chapter 3, it says it, it's not known how things will be. But this is what we know. When he appears, we shall be like him. When you go to verse 3, it says, uh -huh, we shall be like him. And he who has such a hope purifies himself just as God is pure. The response to God is I purify myself because I respond 
to the purity of God. That's why it says, cleanse yourself. Yes, why? Because the more I get closer to God, the more I discover he is so holy, and the more I get closer, the more I discover areas of improvement, areas of cleansing, more than I knew when I was starting, when I was far. And that's why cleanse yourself. You will be a vessel of honor. This has several characteristics. You will be a vessel of honor. Number two, sanctified. Number three, useful for the master. Number four, prepared for every good work. This is a product of a person choosing to respond to the purity of God. The God I serve is so holy, let me purify myself. The God I serve is so righteous, let me just obey him. The God I serve is so glorious, let me cleanse my, get rid of some habit until God accept me as a vessel of honor, sanctified, useful for the master, prepared for every good work. The Bible says, free from the last. This is something that, that every preacher should understand. There is a time in the life of a soldier that you have to literally, socially, physically, mentally run away from the last. Here it talks about youthful. Now the last is not just youthful. I've seen old men. The other day I was dealing with an issue of an old man of about almost 80 years who is defiling, destroying, defiles young girls from a primary school. During the break time, they ran to his house. And when and his training, they came to, to, to this cross letter. How, how many years? And man, so today we don't talk about youthful last. We talk about the last which is there in all men. Free from the last. Let God know I'm not only fighting battles, but I'm pursuing a character. Somebody said charisma will lift you, but character will keep you. So that I have character to keep me, I flee from the last, and I pursue righteousness, faith, Love, peace with those. Can you hear this? I am, I am joining a group of people who are pursuing these things. With those who call on the name of the Lord out of pure heart. One thing you need to know, there are times when you reach a point whereby you can only work and join those people who call on the name of the Lord out of pure Pure heart. Yes, you youth should know that. Married men should know that. Married women should know that. Sometimes you find this is somebody's pastor's wife. This is a pastor. We need to join those who call on the name of the Lord with a pure heart. Not only calling on the name of God, but they are, pers they are pursuing something. They pursue right. They are not just resting. They are pursuing excellency. They are pursuing better things. They are pursuing better performance. Who pursue righteousness. Pursue faith. They pursue love. Peace. And we are pursuing these things with a group of people. Whatever I am, a group of people who call on the name of the Lord out of pure heart. The Bible says something. Avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. Anytime you have in a group, avoid this level of foolish, ignorant disputes. If you are leading a group in the church, make sure there is no room for this. Keep people. Because a servant of the Lord must not quarrel. Be gentle. Bible says, verse 24, able to teach, patient, and in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. You know, I always tell people, you don't have 
to quarrel so much to discipline somebody in the church. You don't have to quarrel. You don't have to quarrel so much to correct a brother. You know, sometimes a brother is being corrected and the way we react is as if the whole church is bouncing on that man. We need to call that person. Correct the person. No quarrel. We have no grudge. It's correction. We, already, we know what is righteousness. We know the truth. We know the teaching. Now we are using a yardstick. We are using a standard. We are not accusing, we are correcting. And it's very important. Paul is saying to Timothy, can you please correct people? Correct people with the humility. Those who oppose and give chance for whatever. And that's very important in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. And that's why we are saying, if we are going to prepare for battle, we must have what the Bible talks about approved and disapproved soldiers, workers. As in 2 Timothy, that is chapter 2 from verse 14, go down up to verse 26. That is very important. Another thing you need to raise and we need to accept. There's what, we, what happens in the heart of a person. The witness of the spirit. Romans chapter 8 verse 16 says. The Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit. That we are God's children. If today I do something. I sense it's not only my spirit that agrees with it. Even the Holy Spirit bears witness. If I am anointed, the Holy Spirit is bearing witness. Truly, I have anointed you. Preach. The issue that God you save people. I'm not doing a trial. I sense the Holy Spirit is giving a clear witness. Today he's going to save. It's good to keep the heart awake so that whenever the Holy Ghost confirms something in your heart, you can detect it. Do not destroy the sensitivity. I always call it the meter. That when you choose something, you know it's not only my heart, it's not only my heart that chose. Even the Holy Ghost was my witness. And that witness of the Holy Spirit has a levels. And it helps a soldier to feel, helps a man of God, a woman of God to feel. I and God are together. I'm not walking alone. God is not so silent. Even if I don't have so many things, I have in my heart a very clear witness, confirmation, a stand of the Holy Spirit saying, I'm with you. Go ahead. You know, it's like what happened in 1 Samuel chapter 30 when David and his strong men prayed until they were unable to pray because Amalekites had carried away wives and children and burnt into everything. And they thought, now we can stone David. And David, the Bible says, he prayed until God spoke and said, please go after them. And surely you are restoring everything. So when David was going, he knew the work he's making to us Amalekites is confirmed. God spoke about it. The Holy Ghost is my witness. That I'm going to bring back all the wives and the children. It's good to fight battles. Not only with weapons. But inside the heart. You have the witness of the Holy Spirit. That's why it's good to keep your heart. In a way that Holy Spirit can confirm things day and night. So that if people arise against you. You, you, you not use them as a measure of love. If people don't accept you. You not use them as, a, as the, the measure of truth. Already inside you, you know. That's why sometimes you can be minority, but majority, because God is on your side. I was alone, but God was on my side. It's like Elijah on the mountain with the first prophets. He was alone. But now being alone and everybody else on the side of the enemy does not mean you are weak. It means I'm alone, but the Holy Spirit bears witness with my heart that God is on my side 
and majority, I have the majority on my side because Jesus is with me. And heaven, which has trillion of soldiers, is they are backing me. That's very important as a soldier. I sense the whole heaven is backing me in this battle. And you never feel alone. You feel I have the witness of the Holy Spirit I'm winning. I may be alone. You could be alone like Elisha and Gehazi in the days when a battalion from Syria came after Elisha. But I said, they that are for us, we may be two, I and my servant, but they that are for us are more than they that are for them. It's good for a soldier to have sensitivity, discernment, clarity of the battle. We will win. We have two other lessons to cover in this topic. But for now, hey, keep on now praying about this. For Jesus is raising you to win battles. Father, I present every battle that my sister, my fellow pastor, bishop is engaged in. And I declare that this man, this, this woman, this man receive favor with you. Receive a position with you to win. And the Holy Spirit glorify his, the name of Christ by this person winning battle in the family, at the place of work, in the calling, in the programs of the church, in the program of life. I now, from the throne of God, declare victory or in every battle that our people are engaged in, in Christ's receive.